Alright, so I'm back here at the Vax Station 3200. I'm all set and ready to troubleshoot the bad DRAM and see if I can find out which one it is. Replace it, be done with this at least for a while. Just wait for the VAX to boot up here once it finishes the post. Um, it's a specific test. Okay, so test 48 seems to be a fairly thorough memory test. Um, it's caught every error that I've been able to find where some of the other tests don't, at least with default parameters. Test 48 is one that, because it seemed to catch errors where others didn't, um, it's one that I ended up reverse engineering enough to actually figure out what the register output means. So the main important outputs are R1 here, the address that was tested, uh, or that was being tested when it found an error and P8 the contents of MemCSR16 uh, MemCSR16 is a memory controller register contains a number of pieces of information the most important of which for troubleshooting RAM is probably the error syndrome which due to the ECC design is usually able to tell you exactly what bit is wrong. Uh, the only exception to that, of course, is if you've got more than a single bit error, in which case uh, it'll be harder to tell where the actual errors are occurring. So if I return to the results of test 48, you can see that R1 is indicating an address in the seventh megabyte of RAM that'll be important later and P8 indicates uh, MemCSR16 had 6B for the error syndrome bits so coming back to the table here I can look up 6B which is 1101011 indicating that bit 13 is the memory bit that had the error and I know of course that it's in the seventh megabyte so what I've done previously is mapped out the physical layout of the card there are 10 or 11 columns or so and uh, as many as 37 rows in some spots and by finding, let's see, what was that again, 13. If we find data bit 13 in this table, which is starts here, and then we look at the seventh megabyte, find out that the bad DRAM must be F13. So F13 will be in column F and the 13th row, or somewhere around here. So I'll be able to count the DRAMs out on the uh, on the card once I've got it pulled and remove the bad DRAM, replace it with a good one. Because of the way I've been replacing these DRAMs, I've ended up replacing a lot of the bits in the fourth megabyte because that was that those were some of the first DRAMs I replaced, uh, and I've replaced them with a single. 256k by 18 DRAM instead and so I've still got some spare bits on that DRAM I think I've replaced about 11 so I've got at least somewhere around uh, 7 maybe a little more uh, bits to spare there so I'll remove the bad DRAM I'll take one out of the fourth megabyte swap it in and then I'll wire up the bit to replace the one I removed from the fourth megabyte since I'm replacing all those bits with a single DRAM, they have to stay in the fourth megabyte.
So now I'm just going to turn off the vax and I'll pull the card out, take it over to the workbench, remove the bad DRAM, swap it with what should be a good DRAM, wire up a bit on my kludged in 18 bit DRAM, and then it should be good to go. And I'll have to run test 48 again and make sure there's not any other errors. Okay, cards on the workbench, soldering iron and desoldering iron are heated up. So the bad DRAM supposedly is F13. So since I'm looking at the bottom of the board, this over here is column A, B, C, D, E, F. So here's column F. And I know that this row is 16 because it's right above the 74F244 buffers here. So here's row 16, therefore that's 15, 14, 13. So I'm going to start by adding some fresh solder, get some new flux into the solder joints, and that'll make it easier to desolder. Next I'll use my vacuum desoldering gun to vacuum the solder out of each of the solder joints and then that will allow me to remove the DRAM. Very often on a multi-layer board like this. Some of the joints will be stubborn, especially ones that are power pins. So you'll usually have to go back and, and re-solder a joint so that you can try and suck it out again. Like I said, there's a couple that were stubborn. One of them is the uh, VCC pin, if I'm not mistaken. So you just solder it again and try the desoldering gun. Okay. Very often the pins are still holding on to the side of the through hole and may need to be broken loose. Kind of depends how big the hole is. Some boards, the hole is large enough that the IC will just about fall out on its own. On something like this, where they're trying to be very dense, holes are going to be relatively small compared to the size of the pin, and they're going to hold on. Oh, it's pretty loose, but there's still a pin that's holding on.
Okay. So now that that's out. What I didn't show was removing uh, one of the good DRAMs in the fourth megabyte from here. Uh, I already have that part removed. I'm just going to install it. Whenever you're installing an IC, at least in my experience, it seems to be a good idea to do two far corners and heat one side up while you push the device in to make sure it's completely seated. Last thing you want to do is solder every pin and then find out it wasn't really seated against the board and now somehow you've got to either heat all the pins at once to get it seated or you have to completely remove it again to make sure that it's seated against the board. Otherwise you run the risk of having an IC that's sitting too high and it runs into the next card in the chassis, especially in uh, cases like this where all these Q-Bus cards sit pretty close to the next card. As it is already, because all my Kynar 30 gauge mess on the front near that 18 bit DRAM, I already have to put these the memory board and the CPU card in as a pair essentially, because otherwise uh, all the pins on the bottom of the CPU card will catch on the 30 gauge wires and rip them off the DRAM, and it's not fun doing that. Okay, that's all there is to it. Goes fairly quick if you have the right tools to do this kind of work. Next step is to put the RAM card back in and run the RAM test again and see if we have any additional errors. Well, as is all too often, unfortunately, the case in the process of trying to fix something, uh, I broke it a little more. So my 30 gauge wire mess there, as I was putting the RAM card in, I managed to knock a wire loose. I believe it happened to be the A6 address line, uh, based on what I found now, and it must have touched something on the CPU card, and I think it blew out the address driver. Um, of course I took it back out and figured okay whatever I'll solder it back in place and try it again and well system wasn't showing an image on the CRT display the VCB02 obviously was you know nothing was trying to to print anything to it so I got out the serial console cable brought out the VT420 got the console up and of course it's reporting memory errors that it didn't report before um, so what I've done is hooked up the logic analyzer and tried to figure out exactly why these tests are failing. Uh, the conclusion I've come to is that my A6 address line is shorted, meaning that I can do something like deposit 0 into address 0. And of course I can examine address 0, and it is in fact 0. And I can go deposit into address 100 uh, that's not A6 that's set on the VAC CPU it's A6 that ends up being set on the DRAM side uh, so keeping in mind that these the, the RAM card is 32 bits well 32 data bits wide it's an additional 7 bits of ECC but the RAM card essentially is, is 4 bytes wide. It'll store a whole long word, so this 100 turns into word hex 40 on the RAM card, uh, which happens to be 
A6 set uh, in a column address. So if I deposit a number here and I go examine zero, look at that, it changed. And depending on what you deposit into 100, oftentimes you'll get an ECC error. Um, and I've gone through, and, and the reason certain bits change and others don't is because on the RAM card, there's a lot of address buffering going on for the sake of trying to drive 312 DRAMs. If you just tried to hang 312 DRAMs off of the address bus, not to mention there could be up to... Uh, three other cards in the system if you just tried to hang 312 DRAMs off of the bus without putting any sort of buffering in there it never worked so clearly there's some sort of buffering hierarchy on the RAM card and there are certain groups of DRAMs that are sharing the same buffer ultimately and this particular group of DRAMs that are showing the bit errors here must be on the same buffer I've gone through and done a lot of testing here with deposits and examines and logic analyzer and looked at uh, which DRAMs I could figure out were on this address buffer and I'm going to go through and confirm that these are in fact all on the same buffer and then do my best to figure out what chip is actually the buffer. There's a number of uh, 74 LS244s on the board. I'm hoping it's one of those since they're a common part. It's also some large-ish DAC QFP ICs, which I believe are data buffers unrelated to the address. Um, if one of those was broken, frankly, I wouldn't have any way to fix this. So I'm hoping it's going to be one of the 74 LS 244s, but I'll pull this card out of here and start probing it, and uh, we'll find out. Well... I think I found the issue. Let's see if I can get a good picture of this here. So that lower left pad there. You can kind of see the problem. I went to remove this DRAM to place it in the spot of the bad one. Managed to just barely lift that trace there that happens to connect the two adjacent columns to the A6 address line. Meaning basically all the DRAMs in the two columns to the left of this are um, their A6 address line floating. So I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of 30 gauge Kynar to carefully wire that back together. Then once I've done that I'll put this back in the test fixture and make sure it's working again and uh, run the RAM tests and everything and see if it's good or if there's any more RAMs that are going to have to be replaced. Hopefully I'll be more or less done after this. Alright, it's all back together after I fixed that screwed up trace. Ran through pretty much the whole battery of tests that I found in the list and nothing gave an error. Test 48 passes now. Um, so, seems to be fixed at least for the moment. There's no telling if more DRAMs are going to go bad in the future. It seems like I already had it fixed once and an additional one went bad in the past uh, six to eight months or so. Now, something for the future maybe is that I've got this ESDI hard drive, which I was able to confirm that it works properly and uh, came out of a DOS machine. And uh, if I can track down a reasonably priced Qbus controller. Maybe I can put it in the VAX and get myself about another 160 megabytes of storage in addition to roughly that much on the RD54 already. For the moment, I'm done here. 
and until I get time to install an operating system or play around with this, uh, that's all for today.